Hi, uh, this is a follow-up to the dial tone frequency decoder that I built earlier. You'll find the link to it in the video description. Instead of using the analog circuitry, this time around I went with an Atmega328 microcontroller. I uh, chose to assemble the parts inside a plastic enclosure, uh, getting the dimensions uh, as close to the cell phone size as possible. To display the characters, I used a 16x2 monochromatic uh, LCD display and powered the unit by a single 9 volt battery, which is uh, good for about 4 hours of continuous operation. Since most of the microcontroller pins got assigned to input processing and display operation, I chose to include no tactile controls aside from the power switch. Right next to the power switch you'll find two 3.5mm audio jacks, one of which is used for the sound input and the other for command output. I designed the device to act as a cell phone controlled uh, relay capable of uh, running household electronics but never got around to actually using it. To test the device, I'm going to connect it to the same Nokia 3390 cell phone that I used in my previous demo. Uh, one cable goes into the headset output and the other to the audio input of the decoder. Uh, as soon as I start pressing the buttons, uh, you should see uh, characters show up on the decoder screen. Uh, the benefit to using microcontroller over the analog circuitry is that I can store um, more characters in the buffer memory and I can also process special kinds of characters such as the asterisk and the pound, something that wasn't possible to do with the 7 segment display. Also, since the decoder is now capable of displaying text characters in addition to numbers, it can be used to decode uh, short SMS messages, uh, essentially acting like a pager. And here you can see me test the device with a Wi-Fi enabled um, iPod running Skype. It will work with anything that produces an audio output. It will work with an iPhone, it will work connected directly to your PC output, it will work with a television. And uh, actually one of the things that I did out of curiosity is I played a few movies where people were dialing phones on screen and off screen just to see if the decoder would pick it up and it did. And you know what? Uh, an interesting fact that even if you do not see people type the numbers, um, on the phone, the dial tone is still 555. It, it is the same fake number that is being used in every movie. <laughs> and now it's time for a quick teardown to show you what's on the inside of this prototype. Uh, as you can tell, I didn't bother making custom PCBs. Uh, after all, it's only another prototype. Everything is wired by hand. Uh, most of the components are attached to the front panel. Uh, the battery is uh, removable but is not easily accessible, you have to remove the screws to get to it. Uh, and if I get it out of the way, you'll see all of the main circuitry. Um, the main chip with the white sticker on it is the Atmega328, that's the brains of the machine. And uh, next to it is the uh, dial tone decoder chip, part number MT8870DE. And that's the most important component in this entire assembly, that's the chip that uh, turns the analog audio signal into binary numbers that uh, Arduino understands. Uh, this is the voltage regulator that runs both microchips and the one above it is the MOSFET that controls the output relay. That's in case you want to trigger something with a unique uh, phone number combination. You dial a number and then uh, that switch gets shortened and then you can do things like turn lights on in your apartment or I don't know get the coffee machine running before you get home, things like that. Uh, the rest of the internal components are pretty self-explanatory. Most of them are taken off uh, reference uh, designs for the Arduino and for the DTMF decoder. Uh, there are two frequency chips, uh, one uh, 16 megahertz uh, that runs the Arduino clock. Uh, DTMF clock, I believe it is uh, 39 megahertz. Um, and uh, the thing that I'm pointing out right now is the programming header that meets directly with an FTDI to USB uh, adapter and that thing connects directly to the PC and that way I can reprogram the firmware. And this concludes my demonstration. If you like electronics, visual effects or anything in between then subscribe to my channel. See you later.